Hi, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video series, we are going to start another wonderful concept provided by .NET Framework in order to create the user interfaces. And here, we are going to start with Windows Presentation Foundation. In short, we also call it WPF. As I said, this particular technology will be used for the UI development. That means throughout this video series, whatever we are going to discuss will be limited for the UI part itself. For the other things, whatever we are using, such as database, you should have the proper knowledge of that. Along with the database, you should also have a sufficient knowledge of .NET framework as it is the core component out here. C sharp programming language, which we are going to use here in WPF as the programming language. You can also use VB with WPF, but here in this series particularly, we will be working with C sharp language itself. WinForms. WinForms are basically the classic Windows forms. It will be recommended if you know this particular technology. Even if not, you can start with WPF but not without .NET Framework and c -sharp programming language. Along with that, you should also have the knowledge of the database such as SQL Server as by the time we'll be doing any database connectivity or any database operation, we will be working with this SQL Server itself. So you should have the knowledge of all these things. If you don't have any particular topic, then you can simply refer to the VG tutorials which are already available out there in our Tutorials Point website. Once you are done with that, you can start working with the WPF. So now let's get started with it and see what the WPF is all about. So as I said, it is the framework which is used for creating the Windows application. When I say Windows application, that simply means like, first of all, we will have to install a particular application into the desktop and only then we will be able to use that. All right, whether it's an internet based application or not, but first of all, you will have to install the instance, whether it's a client or server instance in your desktops. For example, if you work with any particular tool like Skype, then you have to install the client, client instance of that software into your system and then after that you can start making the use of it. All right. So these are the Windows applications. By the time we'll start working with WPF, you will observe that for designing, we are using a special language here called XAML. It stands for Extensible Application Markup Language. All right, so as a name, it is similar to XML. Obviously, it is the XML, all right? But here, we'll be using XML as to create the UI, to design the UI. So it is basically forming an application. So that's why we call it Extensible Application Markup Language. And it is something individual, like it is not fully dependent on WPF itself. XAML is a separate language, which we are using here in order to work with the WPF. Along with that, you can also use XAML in order to create the Silverlight applications or Windows Phones application. Compatible with classic WinForms. As of now, we just talked about the classic uh, Windows Forms, all right? So even while working with the WPF, you will observe like this particular technology is fully compatible with WinForms. Even if in a WPF application, you can add the WinForms, all right? So you can see there's a full compatibility of WPF with the older technology called WinForms. Now, let's go through some more features of WPF which will motivate us to work with this particular technology. So first of all, this is, superior, this is providing you superior data binding. Data binding in the sense whenever you have a data source and you, you want that particular data to be displayed over a windows, then you require windows, sorry, data binding. And here you will be getting the superior quality data binding, either it's a one way data binding or two way data binding. In one way, the data will flow from the source to the uh, control, but in two way, if you are making any changes in the uh, controls, that will also be reflected in the actual data source. So that is two way data binding, which can be done here in uh, WPF in a very simple way. Support for MVVM. MVVM stands for model view, view model. All right. So basically it's an advanced 
stage of the three tier architecture which is used for making any data communication. So in 3D architecture, as we used to create the UI part, then some business logic and then the data access layer. So we'll do something similar to that, but in a much better way. Animations. Animations can be done here through storyboarding using the XAML itself. You don't have, don't have to write any programming logic for performing any animation or any 3D things, but you can do all those things just by putting some proper tags using extensible application markup language. Better performance. Since here we are using XAML, so XAML is a lightweighted language which will form the lightweight Windows application, all right? So performance wise, it will be better than the classic Windows forms. But it's not essential that you are working with XAML only. If you want, you can still can continue working with the C Sharp and at the runtime, you can make the changes whatever you want to do all right cleaner usage of controls here in wpf whenever we'll put any control in xaml you can put the uh, customization into th those particular tags through the xaml code itself for example if you want to put an image button and here we don't have an image button particularly so what you can do you can simply put a button tag and inside that you can nest an image tag so it will create the image button for you. So similarly, you can put some more uh, cleaner usage of the controls while working in a WPF application. So in our next video, we'll cover the architecture of WPF and we'll see some more interesting features of WPF, which will make you learn the WPF in a great detail. So that is all for this particular video.